We are, we play well together. Hi friends, I'm Julie Dara, the communications director of We Play Well Together, and we are your exclusive North American distributor for metal sounds made in France, Hokema Kalimbas, and feel tone maker of monochords and wooden tongue drums. So these are all handmade instruments imported from wonderful companies. And today I'm going to have a wonderful conversation with a percussionist who will be joining me live in a moment. So we're still just getting settled in with the Instagram live. There we go, there he is. And he should be showing up. There he is, welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh, I see some friends. Welcome, Zita. Welcome, Field Tone Monochords. Oh, and welcome, David. So, David is joining us today from the UK, and I'm Jewel. I'm here in New York City. How fun that we get to have this live conversation. So, David is a percussionist with a really, really interesting story about memory and recovery and uh, about reconnecting with music and himself. So where should we start with the story, David? Uh, what is it? Should we, should we start at the beginning, which is the, the beginning of coming back as a new person? Where would you like to start? I don't know. Um... Hello, by the way. Hi. Hi, welcome. Yeah, everyone, thanks for having me, Joe. Um, I don't know. I was, I was talking to my friend yesterday about something, and we talked about that in biblical stories they start at the they start at the end at the beginning, or is it no? They start with the ending. That's right. The ends at the beginning. That's what I'm trying to say. So. I guess, don't know, but what's the ending? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, so, for, so from what I understand of your story, and I'm so excited to have this conversation to hear more of the details because I just heard a little bit of it and I thought, oh, this is so, so compelling, uh, which is, so my understanding is that you had uh, uh, a situation where you were in the hospital and you lost, completely lost your memory. And then came back to this life that was your life that you didn't recognize and that music has been uh, a huge support and part of this journey but that essentially you came back and found this incredible percussion setup and all of these wonderful instruments which included the zenko oops <laughs> the zenko tongue drum which is one of the instruments that we distribute here with we play well together um and this is made by metal sounds in france it's a it's a tongue drum that has slits cut out of it but that this uh was really at the heart of this amazing percussion setup but that you had to relearn there it is <laughs> that you had to relearn uh, not only who you were, but, or, or are, or rediscover, but that uh, to reconnect to all of these instruments that were completely foreign and strange and wonderful, and yet there was still this muscle memory within, as well as the, the subconscious memory. So that's, that's, this is a conversation about memory and how, how sound um, can facilitate healing on so many levels. So that's my under understanding of the story, but I, I want to maybe maybe that's starting at the end is is, is um, uh, where we are. But I I'd love to, yeah, maybe maybe go back to that moment of waking up in the hospital and start from there. I'm enjoying yeah. listening to you the way you're putting it all. I was just like getting into the story. <laughs> it's just like oh gosh, I'm in this. But I was like, <laughs> actually, I was just listening to the way you described it all. Um, well, the first, will you do me a favor? Cause I'm, I can switch off and start maybe rambling. So you just give me a wave and say, right, just. Yeah, we want to hear your ramble. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> well, there's a lot of apparent ways in there. Cause I don't remember a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, so what I've been told was back to 2017, my first memory comes in June. So I had nothing of the year up until that point. 
so I don't remember falling ill, or I don't remember the first five weeks I was in hospital for. I found me ill, and I was I'm the, my friend showed me the room where where they found me, so that was quite it's weird because I don't remember any of it, and my sister was there pretty much all the time by my side, and there was in a coma for three weeks apparently, and I don't know like died a couple of times, they had to come in and bring me back to life. But then after five weeks, that's when I had my first memories. And um, I, I feel like they were like whispers. They were really early in the morning, about five o'clock. And um, they were just like names at first. And it's like, wow, who's that, who's that? And then one morning it was a song and after a while, I was like, oh my gosh, I wrote that song. That's weird. And then I don't know how we started to use the computer again. My system used to help me find passwords and things. I don't know. But there was a lot of unopened that emails because they'd been sent while I was out in a coma and that. And that's when we started. I started to find out about my living before it happened, I ran music groups in psychiatric hospitals. So in psychiatric hospitals. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So music and mental health has always been a huge part of my life. And, mm. and um and then one day I I found this website of this person who looked just like me sitting behind this array of percussion instruments. And I was like, well, what what adds that your so he, I'm sitting behind, and um, it had a really strange name. It was called Apapo Elu, which I now know is a Nigerian name, but that's all changed. And then I guess the next thing is, after nine weeks, I came home and went in the flat, and it was there. It was like, it's real. It's like, oh. <laughs> so it being this big percussion setup. So you, you saw yourself as you were recovering in the hospital, this person you didn't recognize playing all of these drums, and then you came home and voila, there's this incredible setup. Yeah. Wow. So how, how did you, how did you react when you first saw all of those drums? Well, that first night back, I've gone like, what I have, like my memory, I've picked out things now, but it, they're like little glimpses of glimpses of memories are called and they're just like little pictures and then mm. I had to learn where where that was but I've, I've learned a lot of them now and as far as I remember that first night it was just like just the fact that it was real and it was in my room and but going back into that room it was like it wasn't it was like I'd gone into the home of someone who died but all his possessions were still there Wow. It was just like, I went on this, because I, I clear, I've cleared all my possessions out now, and it's about over two years, and now, apart from the percussion set up, because I'm moving next month, I can, all my possessions fit in the, the boot of a small car, everything I've got. Mm. So all of the possessions, most of the possessions from your former life, you let go of, because it was a, it's a person that you don't you don't remember the version of yourself you don't remember but the percussion is just, going with you wow i tried selling it and it won't go <laughs> and just after a while we're just like okay we've still got something to do together but wow so you tried selling it and then it wouldn't sell and so then you realize well i have to relearn how to play these instruments wow mm. my friend who because Buddhism is a part of it. I, like when I'm playing the tabla on one of the songs, I'm chanting Namya Harenge Kyo. And my friend who introduced me to Buddhism in my past life, she visited and she helped me get back into it. And she actually said to me, we're work, she's going to do the visuals with the setup. And she said to me at one point, you could just put it away. Instead of selling it, you could just put it away. And I think there was a point of that it's just like okay you don't want to go but i can't handle it at the moment so i just put it away for a while and at some point it came back to life 
Yeah, so tell me about that. When did you start to to play these instruments again? This might sound weird. This all gonna, it all sounds weird. <laughs> I truthfully don't remember. Mm -hmm. I know I know I moved out of London in 2018 to where I live now in Hertfordshire. And I'm in the studio where I did start playing it again. So it must have been in 2019 or 2020. But I, I don't I don't remember even learning it again, but because we made this recording and there were two of my friends apparently who were there in the studio and I don't remember making it, but I must have sat and listened to that and somehow worked out how to play it. Mm. So you were listening to recording of something that you had done prior to the memory loss and then learning how to play with that. But even that, I'm just assuming that because I don't remember relearning it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. So even as part of your recovery, there's loss of memory in the time after yeah. the, the hospitalization. Yeah. Interesting. Very much so. So you still have a, an active negotiation with memory that's, that's ongoing. A way of putting it. That's such a beautiful way of putting it. Mm. Mm. So I'm so curious then with I've heard um, so much from this myself, honestly. Yeah, no, it's it's just it's just fascinating. So um, you know, when we talked off off of the live, I was sharing with you how there have been many, many findings about memory and music and how there are parts in our brain that store music that are different than language. And so there's some wonderful videos online about folks with Alzheimer's who have completely lost their, their identity. They don't recognize friends or family. They kind of just sit all day and are like zombies. But then there are music therapists that come and work with music and they play music from their younger years. And, and because it's stored in a different part of memory than other parts, it helps them come back online and suddenly the personality is there singing along to the music or tap, or, you know, or moving the body or happy. And I, I just think it's, it's fascinating. And, it, and so when you were speaking and I'm not an expert, so I don't want to analyze you, but as you were sharing your story, it seemed to me that even though there's a big part of your personality that is, that you don't remember, you don't connect to, or don't even recognize that the music stayed within you and is and became still accessible. Um, I think it it must be something along those lines because I've seen the videos of you playing, and it's not a beginner <laughs> playing the drum. You're not like me on the zinco just kind of playing around because I'm not a percussionist. Um, like you're playing these these multi-rhythmic complexity pattern, you know, complex patterns. And uh, that's not something you could just quickly learn. That's something that would take years of practice. So I imagine that there's something in your muscle memory or something in a, the, ac the accessible parts of your brain that, that have that musical connection. I don't know, when I'm, when I'm saying all this, does that resonate with you? Is that, what I'm was your experience? Seriously, I'm just listening. It's lovely. Mm. I'm learning from you. It's, I could just sit and listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. But I, I, yeah, can you speak to a little bit, even if it's in the present moment, you know, what is it like for you when you're sitting and you're playing with this beautiful percussive setup, which you've now totally reconnected with? Um, yeah, maybe you could describe the kinesthetic sensations or is it more that you just go into a flow state and it's something is there that you can't quite comprehend? That last bit sounded close. Can't quite mm. comprehend. Um, fascination is a word. Mm. It's like, because I have another result of, 
I have epilepsy as well because of the brain injury. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was pretty full on. I had like meningitis and encephalitis. And then the body sort of said, right, I'm going to make, I'm going to have, we're going to have sepsis as well because I felt like it was saying to the um, infection, you're not taking my life, thank you very much, I'll do that. Mm. So we with the sepsis. So there's this almighty battle going on. And then I think the epilepsy is a result of that. Um, apparently I have this scarring on the temporal lobe. And it's, and again, I guess these things are maybe seen as negative things, but, and they're pretty scary. There's no doubt about that. But there is a, like a sense of wonder, mm. like this deja vu that's almost constant. Mm. And, you, and you know you've been there before. Almost today, I come to the studio once a week, but when I come in, it's still like, oh, I've been here before. And that, I think that's there when I'm playing, I think. Mm. But I'm also really analytical, really self-critical. Mm. But there are times when what you just described happens and when I'm not filming it and I'll just not worry about if it's in time or not and just play. Mm. And an hour is gone and you kind of think, that's what you used to work for people in the psychiatric hospital. It's that, mm. and that must be what music therapists do. Because I'm a trained as that, and I've sort of got ultimate respect for music therapists. But I, I was like, I think that's what that does. Mm. Just, I've been listening to you know the late Kobe Bryant a lot, the basketball player. Mm. Mm -hmm. Incredible, and he talks about when they taught him mindfulness. And he just talks about that, being able to stay there. So I don't know if that's answering the question, but I think, I think by, by pushing yourself a bit, you've got to stay in the moment. Mm. So I think that's where I go. But I'm also incredibly analytical, so. Mm. Beautiful. So tell us now about the creation of this you have these recordings. Were the recordings made? Didn't you make a recording post memory loss, or or were they made before? Yeah, it was prior. It was um, made prior. Yeah, I felt myself drifting off there. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm like, yeah. I answer Joe's question, and because I forgot, I forget what the flipping start of it was. Um, yeah. So, well, I want to direct some people to you, to your music. Um, so the music was, is on streaming platforms, um, and I think there's a link in your bio, right, that we can click on the link that will take you to the um, to your website, and you can yeah, check the, out. The percussion, the Gathering of Drums recording, I took that down from Spotify, but typical, I can't actually remember why, <laughs> but it's it's on the website, on the percussion page on the website. I know I must have had a reason for taking it down to, I was going to put it up again, but it's not on Spotify at the moment, but it's on the website, yeah. Mm. Beautiful. I'm the making. <laughs> so bringing um, this conversation to the Zenko drum, which is how we serendipitously uh, got in touch, which is, which is so fun. Um, so the Zenko drum is, as, as I said in the beginning, made by metal sounds and it's a tongue drum. So it has these slits that are cut out by lasers and it has these beautiful pitches. So they're, they're hand tuned. There are a variety of different tunings. I have a different tuning than the one that, that David has. Um, so he, uh, the reason that we got in touch is uh, because as David has rediscovered this percussion setup that he already owned, <laughs> uh, that this, this drum in the Occubono tuning uh, was, as he described it, at the heart of the drum, uh, the percussion setup. So all these amazing instruments and then this at the very center. And 
as you described it, it was like, what is this? What is this drum? Where did it come from? So he Googled and found metal sounds and then metal sounds um, connected us, uh, we being the North American distributors for it and because I do trainings. And, and so we wanted to talk about these, these drums and that's how I heard about this fascinating story and wanted to have a public conversation. So tell us about this drum and like, yeah, discovering it at the center, it being pitched percussion. And uh, yeah, yeah, what was that like for you? And how are you currently using this drum? The, I'll share what I, what I know, because I'm going back, I, I know this is, um, because the instruments, it's called the gathering of drums, the, the setup. And the idea is that there are instruments from all over the world and represent the different religions of the world. In, uh, this, per, in this percussion setup that you yeah. created for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's the concept behind it. It's mm -hmm. almost like, anyway, for us, it's almost like they're, they're all- And you, you learned about this concept reading about what you wrote about it before the memory loss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I've, I was able to, that took me back to actually the moment when it, when it came, which was back in 2004. And I can see that now. I see myself standing on the street and it's just like, just look around. And I saw all these different cultures together where I was living. Mm. And it's like, like the, can I tell you about that quickly? Yeah. But I'm, then it will bring me back to this, hopefully. Perfectly, is, perfect. Yep. We, we go on tangents here. That's okay. Fine. <laughs> bring me back to this because this has actually played a part in my healing. It really yeah. has. It's left hospital. Um, it was, it was, I think it was about 2004 and we lived in this part of North London and I can, I've got this now, I've read it on the website and so I can remember that bit. And there was this big, it kind of like, we're repeating it now, it was this dialogue from politicians and media saying that people from different cultures and religions can't live together and they've got to be kept apart. You know, and, and it's like, it really, I think really got, it, it affected me. And it was just literally, stopped on the pavement one day and it was, I just saw there's a big kosher supermarket and bakery and it was about four or five doors away from an Iranian musical instrument and bookshop and then there was a grocer's run by a gentleman from Pakistan next door to a Chinese restaurant and then a little bit farther down there's a Catholic church with a large West African congregation I could see them in their colourful dresses and that backs onto a Jewish cemetery. And in the town, there's a Japanese, largest Japanese community in Europe, a Buddhist temple, and then me, a Scotsman brought up in England. And I was just stood there on the pavement going, we are living together. And I've got to find a way of saying it, but I'm a musician, not a politician. So I've got to find a way of saying it with music. And that's when it started. And then somehow over those next couple of 15 years or so, it grew into what it is now. I don't remember the growing, I don't remember where it came from, but I know that's how it started. And it being this percussion setup, and what, what was the name of it again, or what is the name of it? It's called The Gathering of Drums. The Gathering of Drums. Mm. But that wasn't what it was called when I came out of hospital, and it wasn't the strange name on the website, but it became that. Mm. I was out walking with the carers, I had to have carers with me every day. And I was out walking one, one day in this again it was this thing come come across as a thought and it just went on this sort of journey of translating the name that was a papo ilu which is a yoruba name and we were just walking with one of the carers and he was from ghana and it sort of triggered something because it's next door to nigeria and a lot of the rhythms i use in there are from ghana and it triggered something he was telling me about his home and i was just like it can't be called that anymore because it it almost, by calling it that, it almost defines separation. And it's like, this is about integration. You can't call it that anymore. Mm. So one of the meanings, the words of Papo Elu in Yoruba, it means either gathering of villages or gathering of drums, depending on how it's pronounced. But I'm, I was standing 
this is going through my head on the street and I was like, like how, do you, how do you know this? Where, where's this coming from? But when I thought gathering the drums, it's just like, that's it. That's the mm. name. Um, and then I had to pack it up after a while. Like I said, it was too overwhelming. But this, I just couldn't pack this away. <laughs> and um, like my buddy's chanting, that's a huge part of the recovery. And I would just have this with me and play it in the rhythm of the chant. That's what it'd be like. And yeah, this just, you can tell me I love it. It's been part of the healing. Like it's, we can hug drums across the, yeah. all the, the miles of distance. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it represents Japan in the, because it's the Akabono scale. So in, in the mm. whole, this is part of the Far East represented. And, but people just, they love the sound. And you saw that thing I put up. I went, I'm doing a fringe festival next week. That was the first time I've played it live. And so I went up to, to try and promote it this week and I just had this and I sat on the high street and I was just like I'm going to go for it this is terrifying but I'm going to play it and there was a big football match going on so there's loads of football fans and this one guy came out of the big pub and he just came over with his with his beer and he was staring and I was like okay and he's like oh. sounds like Star Wars man <laughs> <laughs> but I think I mean you get it there's something magical about that about mm, mm-hmm <laughs> like I've talked to you know, I'm stop <laughs> like these <laughs> outer space sounds Ooh. yeah I love that <laughs> we reposted a little bit of um, your post from yesterday so folks can go back and see you playing on the street yeah. how amazing to connect with somebody you know after a few few beers coming out of the pub who probably would never normally be drawn to this kind of music either therapeutic meditative music or world percussion, but he had a moment of pausing and listening and, yeah. and, and hearing and connecting to it, but a positive memory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, part of me would love to know how I found out about it, but the other part of me is just like, it's nicer not knowing. Mm. I like, I nice. like, I like the memory loss. I like it a lot. Wow. Hmm, tell us about that. You like the memory loss. Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Oh, the old memories scare me. Hmm. That was a big process of, I had a lot of therapy, a lot of therapy, amazing therapists of helping me try and integrate with the person who used to live in this body who I kind of feel like died mm. not kind of feel like I feel like he died mm. so the things that scared me were the memories from that life mm. um, but now that's kind of settled down a lot the reason I love it is because it's that fascination word again mm. and my friends will ring me a call and they'll say would you not remember that happening like two weeks or a month ago and I'll be like no so I hear these stories all over again of what happened or the <laughs> conversation we had and it's almost like it just allows you to clear the slate mm. that makes sense. And it's that yeah like you're not carrying around the baggage the rest of us are carrying around <laughs> all of our <clears throat> our regrets and, and um, yeah that's traumatic when memories and triggers and things. When they, when they do come, then it's terrifying. Hmm. <clears throat> so they come, they come in little pieces, like you said, here and there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you, you've been given the gift of really being able to be in the present moment as much as possible. Yeah, not always, but mm-hmm. quite often, yeah. And being in nature more than ever is just, I think maybe a lot of us have experienced that this last year and a half, haven't we? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I think there's a lot to be said for 
not having many memories. <laughs> So I'm curious about your in the moment playing of, of this drum. Do you play it intuitively completely or do you at this point work with certain drum patterns like, like pairings of timing or like my brother's a percussionist so we've been doing uh, some lessons together and so I've learned a little bit about um, and I, I have a musical background, but but um, percussion is a different kind of animal. So working with different patterns of two or three yeah. or four. Um, so I'm wondering, do you do you work with timing and specific patterns, or do you just play intuitively, or is it a little bit of both at this point? A bit of both. Mm -hmm. But I also have to say I've loved watching you play those. I don't know what the instruments are called, they're gorgeous. I love Oh, the monochords? Yeah. I love yeah. Them, those. Um, and it's like when you come when you're approaching them, do you do that same thing? Do you have a set pattern or do you sort of sometimes just Well pull? the monochord is a and I've got one right behind me, so I can reach back. Ooh, play it. Uh, the monochord is a drone instrument, so it's much simpler in that we are, are strumming it and you create this continuous strumming that takes us into a meditative state. Now you can play it rhythmically. You can, we have mallets, um, not unlike the, the Zenko drum mallet. So the Zenko drum comes with this kind of mallet and, and you can use like a soft mallet on the, the monochord. So we can actually play this percussively. Um, and I do sometimes, and in that case, then I would need to play some kind of a, a rhythm or a pattern. But with these drums, because it's pitch percussion, there are these you know very definite hits. Or if you're playing it with your hands, that um, you know we like to share with people. Anyone can buy these instruments and become an instant instant musician. That there's no wrong notes. That you can play it any way that you want. But when I watch you play, David, I, I am hearing these, you know, these rhythmic patterns that are quite deep and quite practiced. So that's why I was curious about your approach with relearning this instrument. How do you approach that? You're, there's little things you're bringing up now that I was, I was just thinking that what you just said that you, I was thinking that today that you can't play it wrong. And I was coming back from where was it? here from the studio here. I brought some equipment down last night so that it'd be here ready for, for us meeting. And on the way back, I see these kind of things. These get me a bit teary and people be like, what's mm. wrong with you? But it's like, like the sensitivity. And yeah, no, we, we're all about the tears here. That's, okay. <laughs> feel free to be emotional as you, as you feel comfortable being publicly. <laughs> well, it's just, I try and be more comfortable as, as ever, but I kind of I, I know that at the same time there's going to be someone who's just going, oh for goodness sake! But then it's like I've got to just be like, but that's what I'm like, and I'd love for loads of people to see that there's nothing wrong with crying; it's really healthy. <laughs> Absolutely. But there was this. We almost bumped into each other. And there was this gentleman on like, like on, a, on a little walkway. And he sort of snapped out and he went, oh, sorry. And I was just like, it's all right, we're both in our own world. And he said that, he just said, I get lost in here sometimes, you know, I've had a lot of troubles. I'm in the homeless shelter up the road. But there's like a little connection there. And I just thought on the way home, well, maybe that's somewhere to go. It's near the studio. I'm just walking one day and say, listen, I just want to know, do you want to, the guys want to hear this. Because some people heard that thing in the town centre the other day and they posted it on Facebook. It sounds so mm. And I just thought last night and this today, maybe in the in the place up the road, they might just like to hang and chill out and listen to it. And what I thought was, if I did get another one, which is kind of one of the reasons I hooked up with you, they could just play if they wanted because you can't mm. get it wrong. There's no like, I can't play, it's just like, so I've just gone off on another tangent, but that just No, that's that's exactly it though, that yeah, that you could take this out and and interact with other people and um people there are many people that long to play music 
and for whatever reason they've been told they can't or they you know, were dissuaded from it as a young age or something. And it's, it's for some of those people putting an instrument in their hands and giving them the empowerment to just create tones that can that can create a world of healing for people wow and just literally you can't do it wrong <laughs> there's nothing to worry about you cannot whatever you do and so i feel like even you talking to me now it's a little nudge it's saying it's time get back out there go and ask people all they can say is no we don't want to try it but mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I feel like we're just chatting here. Yeah, our friend, uh, our friend Brandon Blake is here, who plays kalimbas. He also has these instruments, and he he was saying, "Agreed." <laughs> hi, friends. <laughs> so, hi, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, there's no wrong way that you can play it, and you there's also like deeper levels of of being in the flow and playing it and so it was you know watching that video of you yesterday even though you were out of your comfort zone as you shared like okay i'm gonna go out and play this publicly in front of people and on the street at the pub ah. but watching that video is like oh there's just this ease and grace that's coming through there so that it must be the amount of time that you've spent I guess bonding with the instrument or playing it before the memory loss, after the memory loss that that um, allows you to even be in your discomfort and be comfortable simultaneously. And there's things that you've been sharing that I've been picking up on. I'm thinking, I think maybe that's what you're sharing about muscle memory. Mm. I think, because um, the other thing that I like, I don't, I play with um, soft beaters. And mm -hmm. when I play drums, I play really quietly. There's tips on mm -hmm. the ground, but everything's really quiet now because I have to be quite quiet here. And I think that's part of it. Is like I love to play quietly, mm. but the rhythms are, and that's not the answer either to the question. Sorry. No, it's, but that's that's another great point, though. Is like you know these instruments they come with these more percussive <clears throat> percussive mallets, but playing it with the soft mallet like you do brings brings a whole different kind of touch to it. Feel so. And I've got another another problem, Jewel, because I was like, these are kind of worn out, but I can't remember where I got them from and I can't find this kind anymore. So that's another mm. stretch I've got to go on. I've got some last week and they're really hard. I'm like, that won't work. Um, but that, that's, oh, memory, answer the question. Um, I think it's what you said about muscle memory, because I know yeah. when this all started, and I've got a picture, I'm so I'm so glad I've got one picture. I used to sit on the South Bank in London. Again, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, this one picture, and I know I was a bit in a bit of a not a good place. And that's I just used to love going there and playing. I think I had a, I had a one little djembe, which I've still got, and a cowbell. And I just used to love playing these Afro-Cuban rhythms, two in particular. And I think I would just play them for hours and hours and hours. Um, and I know that that's connected to these other lovely conditions that are in here. You know, there's the ADHD and the OCD, which, again, I love them. It seems a negative thing by society, I think, but I, I love them. Mm, why do you love them? Well, again, sometimes they're scary, um, but I love them because they they become part of part of your identity, and for me, I love the fact that it means that I don't have any physical possessions. I know some people have the opposite; they have a lot. But for me, I'm like. Even when I get a tool receipt from the shop, I almost can't wait to tear it up and put it in the recycler because I love getting rid of things. So I love that. Detachment. Yeah, it means I've got one mm. pair of shoes, which I love. And then when they wear out, I get another pair. And, but it means I'm, like the setup, it drives people crazy, but it's gotta be so. It's just gotta be just so. 
that, that this your drum setup has to be just so yeah mm -hmm. and and when i'm playing those afro-cuban rhythms it's almost like it, it just i think it's those conditions that just allow me to just go in there and one of the ones i'm working on at the moment like what you saw the other night that was it was a rhythm called palo which is a Central African from Congo, ancient Congo rhythm. Congolese, sorry. I've probably got that terminology wrong. Forgive me, anybody, if I've got that all wrong, but it's called Palo. And I learned that in Cuba again about f when I was 40, which is quite a while ago. But it's in there. Yeah. And I love, I don't know, dancing with it, I guess. And mm. the one that and this is still answered your, answering your question of why do you like those conditions? Because it's really drawn me to Nikola Tesla. Because I found he was, I'm, I just wanted to find other people who had those conditions and mm. learn from them and be inspired by them. And he was one mm. of them. And there's, I don't know if you know about his three, six, and nine theory. A um, little bit, but you can share that with us. Well, that fascinating. He used to walk around the house three times before he went into it. Um, and he'd do almost everything so that it would fit in the sequence of three, six, and nine. And this is, <laughs> this is where I get a bit emotional because you think, like, this wouldn't have happened if I hadn't almost died. But now I know that three, six, and nine. And, like, I'm not sure I've shared this with anyone like in public, but like you do everything now. The the system is see if I can do if I can find a way. Say you came up with a number and it was hundred and forty one. You would add four and one, come up with five. And then add the one and you have six, which is like, oh, that works because it's three, six or nine. Mm. But if you had one, four, two, it would add one, four is five, five and two, seven, and that wouldn't feel good. Mm. But they're like, right, one, four, two is not a number I want to be connected with. So say it's your pin code or something you have to remember, or for me, it's the amount of times I chop fruit up in the morning for breakfast. Mm exactly the same through every single day chop it into a combination of three six and nine and it just feels better mm. and you go through numbers and then the way i take that into the drumming the playing is because those afro-cuban rhythms they're in six eight mm. and when i mm. chant and play a tablet i play it in a in a three six nine it's a twelve twelve note pattern and then I've started playing on the Zenko uh, a rhythm that I'm calling 369 which is dedicated to Tesla and inspired by him could, you play, that, could you play a little of that for us well yeah yeah there's a, there's a video online where it just goes it goes it goes off on one but so Shall I just play it instead of explaining it? I'll, I'll yeah, just just play a little for us so we can hear it. I think that the zinc goes out of the frame, but we can hear it. So it's based on this, it's quite a deep West African rhythm called the Zogbo, which is not very well known. It's a beautiful rhythm. And I found it on my iPad. I smashed my iPad up when I've been out of hospital for a couple of weeks, but I found this and saved it. I'm so <laughs> glad. So I'll play it in the cycle.
David, do you think we could pause and maybe do you think, I know you've got your, your camera set up. Is there any way you could point it downward so we could see yeah. you playing that? Yeah. It sounds amazing, but I, I want to yeah. be able to show people what you're doing. I was worried I was playing too long. Shall I worry about everything? No, it's great. Don't worry about anything. This is perfect. Does that work? Um, yeah, that's great. That that's okay. I, I want to just say a massive thank you for being able to play this and share it with you. It feels really special. Yeah, yeah. Um, while you're taking a water, I'll say, um, Brandon wrote, I have had memory loss from a traumatic brain injury. And the way we play well instruments have been crucial in my healing journey. So, yeah, feeling you, Brandon, and feeling the, the resonance of how interesting, right? We've got, we have a couple of folks in our, our We Play Well Together family who've had to... Uh, Cognitive Brandon? challenges, yeah. Hi, Brandon. I, I'd love to share more with you, hear more. Wow. Well, mm. Be interesting to hear if Brandon resonates with anything we're talking about. Yeah, it sounds like good. And what this, I'll tell you, the first I'll play the one we're playing the other night, the, mm -hmm. the Afro Cube and the Six Second, I'll stop and then I'll go into the the, the three six nine the tells tells a one. Great. Oh, as you were playing that, I was recognizing some of the patterns my brother had has taught me with that kind of par like the paradiddle. Wow, you, you play it so much better than me. <laughs> you probably see it and be like, "Yeah, I got it." Yeah, I, when I see it, I can go, "Oh yeah, you're doing this like alternating thing." Yeah, I was, I was, whew, just, I was grooving with that internal. <laughs> so I'll play the um. The one I'm working on was, for me, it's, it's called it three, six, and nine, and it it goes off in this big, big pattern that kind of it allows me to get lost for about. I think it takes about five minutes to play the cycle round fully, and that just allows me to get lost in it. Um, but I'll just play like the first cycle and just stop talking and improvising. Thank you. 
I got lost there. Wow, so beautiful, intricate. Oh, I'm wondering, I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit, but for our, for our listeners, um, could you just maybe like super slow, like show the counting for that? And, and if, that's, if that's too big of an ask, then you can say no, but. Uh, I'd love to do my best. Yeah, like just, that, just so that the layman could have a, an understanding of the three, six, and nine. I'd love to do my best. <laughs> I'm just taking a second so I don't just start waffling again. Yeah, um, like you're, like you're explaining it to a three-year-old child. <laughs> like one, two, three, something like that. But this is lovely because that's the way I ask people to speak to me. <laughs> they say, can you just tell me as though I'm three? So that's, this is wonderful. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say it out loud as though I'm talking to myself as a, as a, as a three-year-old. Perfect. I'm going to do my best. I keep saying I'm going to do my best. Yeah. Okay. This rhythm's from, it's from a place called Africa. And it's a country from Ghana, called Ghana, which is in Africa. What you do, you count three like this. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And we play the first two notes of the first three. So we play one, two, and then we rest on the three. And then the second one, we play one, two, and then rest. And then we play one. So if we're counting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'll show you what I mean, and we can do it together. So we play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. I'm picturing the little, the, the kid next to me, so I'm talking to him. So. I'm going to play along with you, but with my mic on mute, because we have a different tuning, but I'm okay. going to just do it in my own space. Do you want me to wait for you? No, nope, just keep going. I'm just letting you know. I'm muting myself. So we try that again. We've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But what we're going to actually play is one, two, three, one, two, three, one. We'll try that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Try again. One, two, three. 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 Okay, you got that. I'm playing that really well. That's the first part. Now, what we usually do in our part of the world is we would start it again on the next one. So we count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And again, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But on this one, this is beautiful because we start the next part on three, not on one. So I just saw a very puzzled look from my little mirror here. So I'm going to do my best. We're going to work this out. If I wrote it out, you'd see that, but we can work this out. So we're going to, I'll do it first and we'll see what you think. We're going to play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we started again on the three there. I'm checking myself that I'm explaining this right. If I do it, I'll get it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, that was it. So the second time we play it, we don't start on one. We start on it could be called the ninth beat, but it's the third note of the third. 
the third note, I'm, I'm so making it complicated, sorry. Yeah, the third note of the third uh, segment or sequence. Yeah. yeah. yeah we Grouping. Got, we can call it triplets for us. For yeah. Um, one, two, three, that's a triplet. Two, two, three, two triplets, three, two, three, three triplets. So on the third triplet, we start the cycle on the triplet, one triplet, on the third note. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And then the third time we do it, we're going to start it on the second note of the triplet. So it's kind of like one, two, two. Now I'm trusting my brain that I'm visualizing this right because I get, I just play it usually, but I think this is right. Let me just play it and see what, make sure I'm getting this, make sure I'm getting it right first. I'm rocking backwards and forwards, Joe. I think that's a good sign. <laughs> That's it. And then it brings us back to starting on one again. One, two, and you and it's slow, 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 slow. One, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, one. I got that wrong. So that's where we're at. That's the that's the pattern itself. And it would be played on cowbells traditionally. Um, we'd play on the low cowbell. So we could send we'd play a low cowbell. Pretending that's the high cowbell. That's the way it traditionally be played. But Part of this whole gathering of drums concept is I love playing rhythms associated with one part of the world on instruments associated with another part of the world. And the whole concept is that ultimately we're all one. And with my little childlike mind when I came out of hospital, I was like, why do we? My mum told me about all these bombings that have been happening. And I was like, why do we do that? Why do we, just because your skin's a bit of a different shared a colour than mine um, and then I realised this was what this was all about in the past so it kind of starts to help me understand and I kind of think we're going to fall out we're going to argue, we're going to argue with each other but couldn't it just be because we're people instead of because like, we look different or we believe something different so that's I'm waffling again but that's why I love taking rhythms from one part of the world mm. and playing on something they're not really associated with because because that's what a little kid would do <laughs> just be like mm -hmm. oh, i just want to play it um, yeah so it is like a little kid but at the same time i'm really appreciating the deep integration i'm appreciating that you you share where these these different uh rhythms come from so so it's, you know giving credit to where it comes from and really integrating this on a high level so for anyone listening uh what he, what david was just sharing was a really complex drum lesson <laughs> and i have to like i'm gonna rewatch it and go okay i sort of got it but i gotta like go back and count the the because i think you were putting an accent on a different point in the, in the three and it, i'm like oh this is so good but i'm like i need to like watch this over and over again to get it so if you, if anyone is feeling overwhelmed that's because we just got some really deep amazing stuff which and part of the reason i wanted you to show us is is because it just proves the point of how this really complex rhythmic architecture is something that has survived this intense memory loss and and wow i'm, I'm just i'm i'm blown away because it really is intricate and when you break it down they're just it's just counting patterns of three but when you superimpose these different collections wow. and the putting the accents in different places, and then you try to speed it up and alternate the right and the left hand, it's really quite complex. It's like the building blocks of a building are very simple individually, the little bricks or whatever, but then when you put them together, you're creating this intricate architecture 
and that was just a a beautiful breakdown of of how you're you're playing those rhythms so so thank you that was that was indulgent for me <laughs> there's a little i've just started a, a youtube channel which i'm mm. not very good at promoting it but i just wanted to put stuff on there and i did a video about a year ago and it's i'm playing it on timbales and cowbells and there's a bit of a more intimate breakdown of it um but because it i don't i don't think i ever played that rhythm in the past i just found mm. it on the ipad and it's just like oh that's interesting mm. um and where the but your ability to absorb rhythm and to, to to feel it in the body and to be able to recreate that that's something that is more advanced because of all the all the work that you've done in the past, whether you can remember it consciously or not, that is part of the brain saying like, almost like it's like do that because that's like medicine, like so let's go into there and it came it comes up with like it goes around the cycle. I know this probably won't make sense, but it, I'm just sharing what what happened. And I was just, it just, I was just making that video and it started almost going on its own. It's the hands are like, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to get out of the way. But it goes around this circle, this cycle. And you know, when we talked about the next part of it starts on the beat three of the triplet. So what this brain came up with was, okay, not only that, but I'm going to start that on the next note. And then third time, I'm going to start that on the next note. So every time you play a cycle, it actually starts the whole cycle on the next note. I'm blowing my own mind listening to it. Like, so it sounds like you're, you're creating like a spiral, like a Nautilus shell in, with the rhythmic of it. I never thought about that. Wow. Wow. We're both going. <laughs> Because it feels like it's from outside you. You're just like, listen, I'm just mm. doing my hands. I don't, yeah, I'm not. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. So I hope that answered the question. Yeah, <laughs> it answered a question. <laughs> <laughs> this entire conversation has been spiral-like in nature, and that's that's just perfect. David, an hour has gone by already, which just wow. blows my mind. Um, wow. And um, I'm wondering if there's anything that you wanted to share that we haven't shared yet. I'd, I'd love to say thanks to the studio where I am, if that's okay. Yeah. It's called the Praxis Rooms. And it's in a, in a place called Stevenage in Hertfordshire. And it's just a wonderful place that helps a lot of people, but it's helped me a lot. And, um, and then oh, I'm playing the Fringe Festival at Watford next week. So I'll be playing the whole setup the first time. And we'll be, I'll be going well. We're going to have visuals with that. My friend who does, she does visuals which are going to reflect connection and nature and connection between humans. And there's going to be an MRI scan of my brain from when I was in a coma that's being played while we play the rhythm. So <laughs> <laughs> that's next Saturday. So I'd, I'm going to try and do a live stream of that. But that's all. Maybe just, yeah. And, um, and I'd love to hear what, this has been such a, an honor for me. And I'd love to hear what all the other guys think somehow. Yeah, well, we're gonna, we're gonna put this interview up on YouTube and, and add some, some clips of you playing with the whole setup so that you all can see the, um, the Zenko drum is mounted um, on a stand and it has all the other drums around it. So you can see him playing this drum in connection with other, other percussive instruments. And uh, yeah, we're, we'll send this out in our newsletter. And so, so hopefully we will get some feedback. Oh, there is Metal Sounds. Hi, Metal Sounds. Really? <laughs> yeah, you're just catching the end of the interview, unfortunately, Metal Sounds. But we have been uh, talking about the Zinko drum for the past hour and uh, we'll be uh, posting this. And so maybe Metal Sounds, you might want to post this interview on your Instagram channel too. I'm getting some hearts. So, so I'm taking that as a yes. 
technology. Yes. So, um, yeah. And, you know, you know, David, I'm, I, as you were giving me that little drum lesson, I was, I was just thinking for your YouTube channel, that might be something that you may want to, um, you know, add these, these, you know, talking to our inner three-year-old, how to break down really complex <laughs> spiral like rhythms and polyrhythms, uh, which you have a pretty deep understanding and explaining that um, because you understand it so deeply, but many of us, the laymen, the people who just play this drum intuitively, like we need it to be explained as if we were three years old. So um, yeah, just a, a little ask. I know I would watch those videos yeah. for sure. And I think Metal Sounds would love that as well. And, um, Tim, yeah. that's gonna. I'm gonna go into the. I'm gonna go into the Zenko with it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. Look, I'm, I've said it out loud. I'm going to do that. So yeah, I'll let you know when it's there. All gonna... right. Well, I'll be your accountability buddy. With that we would. We would love to share it. Yes, please. On our social channels, and and um, maybe Metal Sounds would too. So, any final words about the the Zenko drum? I know you've you've said some touching words about it. Um, how it's been really important in your healing. And uh, I'm wondering why you think that is. Is it is it just the, the the configuration of tones or just the sound quality of it or what's what's your sense? I guess that's something I'd love to sit around the table with you and the guys from Metal Sounds and everyone who's watching. I'd love to hear thoughts about that. If I had the sense it would be I think it's I think it's a warm connection with my past. It's one of the ones that's not scary. Mm. Um, I think it helps take me to another world. Mm. I like going to other worlds. And it's maybe without being too too deep for ones which I do like going, it just sounds lovely. <laughs> I mean, you see where I'm holding it, it just sounds mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah, I'm holding my mic that tune. Yeah, Mark of Metal Sounds, when I had a conversation with him, I was describing this as a sound reminiscent of bells. It's a very bell-like quality, whereas the, the hand pans, which they also create, have more of like a, a sound like the gongs. They're very resonant and they have all these overtones. But these, there's this simple purity to the sounds of these instruments and I think that touches something really it definitely touches something, something. And, and what I'd love I'd love to have what my intent to do is get another one I'd love to experiment with not just for me but then I can play with people I'd love to go back to the hospitals and one day and work like that but yeah and also to play to and just see and I think it's what the guy said the other night to bring it right back around again it's like something from Star Wars. <laughs> Maybe it takes you to another beautiful place. <laughs> oh, it's been such a pleasure. We've been going for over an hour, David. So thank you for everything that you've shared. It's perfect. Yeah, perfect. So We've really, really enjoyed this. Thank you for everybody who's been hanging out with us. And uh, maybe do you want to just play us out? Like play a couple minutes and then we'll, we'll yeah, end? I'd love to. I'd okay, try. Great. <laughs> I'll just go, I'll keep going and you just tell me when we start. So. Yeah, maybe just a couple of minutes and then we'll say goodbye. There's one thing maybe, um, oh, one other thing? One other thing I'd love to share. I'm, I, yeah. I don't know if it's right or wrong, I'm just going to share it. But I love to finish almost everything when I'm playing the setup. I love to finish with the two notes. It's just that. Almost everything I do, I'd love to finish with that. Mm. I guess. The guys from Metal Sounds, or you could probably have a theory of why, but just for me, that's just like, oh. So. Is it always the same tones? And I don't know what it is. Well, that, I think it's bringing it back to the tonic, and that's like, so, do, so it's the fifth and the tonic. So, yeah, it, that's, a, that's a very grounding interval so that that interval really brings us back home yeah. that's how i would describe that
he kind of gave me goosebumps then. My, my hair is still up on my arms when you said that. That was, that was beautiful. Okay. So can you um, bring your camera back down so we oh, can sorry. see your... Yes, yeah. You. Me, is that okay? Perfect. That was a really mindful hour because I just lost, just went right in there with you. Beautiful fade out to the these final two notes. Oh, <clears throat> I love how you um, kind of honor it after you play, rubbing the hands around the circles. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, <clears throat> David. What a pleasure. As usual, we only have usually a handful of folks join us live, but many, many people will watch the recording afterwards on various platforms. So hope this brings some more awareness to your beautiful music. I want to thank Metal Sounds for yeah. making the Zenkos. I want to thank uh, Gabrielle, who is the founder of We Play Well Together. And I'm Jewel. I'm the communications director for We Play Well Together, as well as a big fan of all of these super powerful therapeutic instruments that are made with a great deal of integrity uh, by hand by creators in Europe. Whew, I feel full. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank you. I think we're gonna log off now. Thanks everyone. Be well. Thank you. And we will be in touch. Much love everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye.